I'm John Liu, and it's a pleasure and an honor to have this opportunity. I'm very grateful for this chance to speak with you, and I'm very grateful to the Common Land Foundation and the Mustard Seed Trust that make it possible for me to do this work. I'm the Ecosystem Ambassador of the Common Land Foundation and the founder of the Ecosystem Restoration Camps Movement. Common Land Foundation has projects in Australia, South Africa, Spain, and the Netherlands and is advising international organizations around the world. The Ecosystem Restoration Camps Movement is a way to empower people all over the world to participate in physically and immediately reacting to the major problems that we have at this time by linking everyone together in a mycorrhizal network, emulating the fungal mycelia that create a kind of a fungal internet in the soil. And in this way, we can connect experts and people with tremendous amounts of experience together with people who are just finding this and other people who have intermediate skills and many people who have been working for decades to understand and restore soils and the water cycle and biodiversity. And over the years, we've been able to create um, 36 camps and many more are forming now. So this is uh, reaching exponential growth. We went from one to two to 23 to 36. So the next stage of this is going into the hundreds and ultimately thousands and more around the world because each camp is self-organizing and self-governing. And it's led by the activism and the understanding, consciousness, and actions of the local people. But it's also connected to a global network of people who have been working in restoration for a very long time. In this way, we're creating living laboratories all around the world that can measure and assess what we can do. And what I've seen in my research over the last approximately 30 years is that it's possible to rehabilitate large-scale degraded landscapes, including those that have been degraded over very vast areas and over very long historical time frames. We now need to restore degraded lands all over the world, wherever they are. And we all need to participate in this. This has to become the central intention of human civilization. If this is the central intention of human civilization, nothing can stop us from restoring the earth. Currently, we have a, a dominant cultural and economic paradigm that says going shopping is the purpose of life and values materialism higher than the life support systems that give us life and, and sustain our lives. This is clearly false. And so we need to have transformational change. And this requires enormous courage. And at the same time, we need to recognize that we don't only have these ecological problems, we have massive social and psychological problems. So we've created new billionaires, a billionaire class, and yet, at the same time, we've created billions of poor people and people who are totally disenfranchised, wandering around in devastating conditions around the world. So we badly need to address these multiple issues. And in permaculture, there's a, a principle of stacking functions. So what's interesting about this is we can engage 
those people who have been disenfranchised and give them back their personal sovereignty. And this is critical because there's so many refugees and homeless and unemployed and hungry people and people who are enduring post-trauma symptoms. So how can they, how can they reach joy and community and, and effectiveness? How can they have full employment and, and how can they have basic incomes and housing and food? If we add these to restoring soils and the water cycle and biodiversity, then we can do all of these things together. And this is, I think, the highest potential of the ecosystem restoration camps. National thinking is not sufficient because our problems are global in nature. So while we all have to work in our own countries and our own localities, we actually have to work on a planetary scale. So we need to really function as a species on a planetary scale. We need to realize that as individuals, we're here for a short while and we're passing through. We're going to die and that death is part of life. And what we need to understand is that humanity and human civilization and life continues. And so we're, it's our time now and we're faced with all these accumulated problems that human civilization has failed to deal with. And if we can't deal with them, then we're just passing them on to the next generation. But this is getting harder and harder because we're at the crisis point where the climate is changing. Extreme weather events are happening. And this is not a problem exactly for the Earth or for life on Earth. It's really a problem for humanity. We're at risk. So ecosystem restoration camps represent the lowest cost and the most effective way to engage the largest number of people as quickly as possible and to train everyone to ensure that everyone has the ability to act at this time. And it helps us to restructure the economy so that the economy recognizes the value of ecosystem function. Personally, I don't believe that we need to monetize the the, the ecosystems, we need to naturalize the economy. I hope you'll all join the ecosystem restoration camps movement. This is not about building an institution. This is about making a network that can help everyone to participate in this, the great work of our time. We can see that going from one camp to two camps to 23 camps, to 36 camps in four years is essentially exponential growth. And the next level of this is much larger. So please, let's, let's all work together. I think together we're strong. Individually, there's very little we can do. We don't need to build a lot of institutions. We need to empower a lot of people. And we need to especially help those who are disenfranchised and don't have the privileges that many of us have in the developed world. And by doing that, we can engage people who are now, now not engaged in the restoration activities. And this is the key for success. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to speak. It's a pleasure to uh, be here with you uh, in uh, cyberspace, and I hope we can have a lovely discussion. Thank you.